Um, so this semester we were working on Clampy, which is um, an iPhone mount for the wheelchair. And the kind of special thing about Clampy was, you know, there are, there are iPhone mounts, there are plenty of iPhone accessories, um, but the client we were working with had kind of a special range of abilities and disabilities. So what we were building for the wheelchair was not only a mount, but also one that could accommodate um, his range of motion and his strength. Um, and it ended up being something that was flexible enough for him and his needs and um, still allowed him the kind of independence that he wanted um, in everyday interaction. So I've actually done a bit of work in assistive technology in the past and it's always really interested me. Uh, I think that working on assistive technology is one of the best things that an engineer can work on, both because the problem is quite interesting and because uh, every engineer wants to build something that helps people, and this is one of the best avenues to do that. Okay, so the way this class was presented to me was a Course 6 class that dealt with a client with a disability, and I was like, oh, I'm Course 2, obviously, I have no place there. But what I was told was actually uh, that you can come from completely different backgrounds. The main concept is that you have a direct impact on someone's life throughout the course of a semester, which is something almost incomprehensible, and I think you can only get a, a course at MIT is real life basis in helping a person. So coming into the class, I actually didn't even have enough information to build expectation, almost. I just knew that it was, it was going to be an interesting opportunity to work on an actual applied problem. And the first few years that I spent at MIT, I worked on a lot of theoretical problems, both in like coursework and things of that sort. And I thought this would be a really cool opportunity to like take my skills and things that I've learned here and work on a real project with a real person. I did learn quite a few things that were unexpected, actually. Uh, in class, there's, I don't know, you're kind of taught that the things that are like most complex are the most grand in a large sense. But when you're working with real people, you tend to sacrifice complexity to make things work, almost. Where you might be in a situation where like a solution that takes you a thousand times longer to implement might be marginally better, but like in the interest of time and speed and you know, moving the process forward, you're going to go for a simpler solution. The thing I learned from that process is that you constantly have to modify uh, what it is you are actually working on. Because at the end of the day, it's not so much about being given a problem statement that explicitly lists everything you have to do, but more about building something that your client wants. And the biggest thing we learned is that those desires can change over time. So it's more important, not, it's more important to work on what the client actually wants and build something that you think he or she will actually use, as opposed to being fixated on what like the initial project proposal was. So it sounds. Vinny touched on this a bit earlier, but through a team dynamic and working in multiple very iterations of our design, we found that assumptions are the most dangerous thing. And when you're moving through various iterations, a full 180 degrees pivot is not something to be afraid of because that can save your entire project. And we found that it actually did. Is we made a lot of assumptions initially about our client Aaron's abilities or disabilities. And we found we were compensating for a problem he never even had originally. So we did a pivot and created an item that he would actually be able to use and enjoy using. Each disability has so many variations. Aaron defines his um, paraplegia as C5 slash 6, and there's so many ranges of paraplegia, and he doesn't even fit within one grade of it. So I think that gives you a little bit of an idea of how different each person's disability can be. And defining your assistive technology for just that one person is the most important aspect because they're your client. But I think on a grander scale, we saw a problem within assistive technology is making it accessible to as many people as possible while still satisfying that disability. I'd say that's a great challenge in assistive tech. The blogs gave us a lot of context because um, to a large degree, the posts could be about anything. And this was important because we know that we are engineers and sometimes when you're working on these problems, when you get too deep into it, you almost forget why it is you're doing this. 
And I guess the biggest thing that the blogs did for me is that after a day spent in like the machine shop or a day spent brainstorming design ideas, you could go to the blog and just read articles about you know people with disabilities, the struggles that they face, how people are looking to combat those struggles, and it kind of gives you a renewed sense of motivation. I'd say it's very important for the professor to realize that we may have no experience with um, user-centered design. I know these two did actually, but I personally did not. And when it's about your client, it's a lot less about what design process you're used to and a lot more about what the client wants to receive from you at the end of this semester. So focusing a lot on client, not making assumptions, and um, I think the professors did a very good job this course though.